Okay, so those, uh, those photos were, were taken from uh, uh, a newspaper revolution that was being handed out in downtown Oakland today, along with the flyer. And they're going to put on a rally, and anyone who's interested can please feel free to, to go and show your support. Um, okay, this video blog is going to be about another idea that I have. Now, in a previous video blog, I mentioned coming up with ideas to try and prevent this type of travesty from ever happening again. And I, let me just say right now that uh, I'm not looking at the world through rose-colored glasses. I do not um, even, I can't afford to entertain the idea that, uh, that there's going to be a solution overnight and that everything's going to be fine and dandy and police officers are going to get, you know, state-of-the-art training and there will never be a a questionable homicide at the hands of the police. At the same time, I'm willing to believe that it's possible to to come up with ways to, to implement ideas that can move it in that move it in that direction. Okay, so uh, let me see. The other thing that I want to say is that this video blog will probably be in two parts um, because I have come up with a third idea, and basically it's it's an old idea. But um, in terms of like trying to apply it directly to this this problem, this dilemma in the American society in terms of police officers who are, you know, those few police officers who are killing young black men, you know, maybe, you know, implementing it in this direction, maybe it is a new idea. At any rate, uh, again, this probably will be two parts. Uh, so what I want to do at this point is just uh, explain you know, how I came up with the idea. And it's, it's real simple. I just in, over the, the past few weeks, just hearing you know, different attitudes and just conversations that I've had with people about what happened and checking out some of the video responses on YouTube, you know, it helped me formulate this idea. And two of the video blogs that uh, that played a part in it. They weren't the only ones, but two of them that, that did play a part. One was from a young man who was, <clears throat> his was, basically it was a negative, what I consider a negative video response. And there was not a lot of sympathy in what he had to say. And I, it is my hope that uh, the Grant family never has to see that video because it was not, this in individual was definitely not coming from a place of compassion or understanding. And let me just say that he was young and I do take that into consideration. This was a young white man who, among other things, one of the things that he said which um, played a part in my why I come up with this this idea was he kind of said, I'm going to paraphrase this, he, basically he was saying, so what's up with, uh, with them having a lawsuit for 25 million dollars why do they get to charge BART police or try to sue BART police for $25 million? What's up with that? And he was saying it in a way as if somehow it was wrong and it was stupid of them to do it. And again, I'll say again, this was someone who was very young, who wasn't coming from a place of understanding or a place of compassion because anyone coming from, you know, just having some sympathy for what this young mother has suffered through since New Year's Day up until now, knowing that she's going to have to raise this child alone, that she's still going to have to provide for this child. Shoes, food, clothing, a roof over the child's head, money for any, for any type of, for any type of expense, medical bills, just, just anything to try and give the child a, you know, a normal life. She's going to have to do that on her own. Maybe. She'll have the support of family and, fr and friends and community. Maybe not. Either way, she'll have to do it on her own. So, obviously, she's going to need money, okay? And that might be, that's one reason why I'm sure the lawsuit is taking place. And second of all, just for the pain and suffering, the way that this man passed, passed on from, her, from their lives. It wasn't from natural causes. It wasn't from an accident. He was handcuffed and shot at point blank range in front of at least between 50 to, to 100 people. 
Just the pain and suffering of that alone, the atrocity of that, is a reason for the lawsuit. Okay. The other uh, video response that I want to mention, as, as part of a preface to my idea, was from another uh, white male. And when I listened to his, I, in all honesty, I expected it to be, you know, negative along, those, along the same slant as this other fellow. And uh, for anyone who's, you know, questioning why, you know, Rebel Frack, why are you even listening to, to people like that? I, I believe, I've been, I've been told by many Pan-Africanists and Rastafarians to never leave any stone unturned when stepping out of Babylon. Babylon is a state of mind, it's, it's an attitude, it's, it's not a fixed place. It's not just in one institution in our society. It's not just in the United States. It's attitudes and actions that can, uh, that can be perpetrated by anyone, male or female, African, European, Latino, Asian, anyone can be, you know, can be a part of that. And so with that in mind, you never know where an idea might come from or a conversation or word said that might spark an idea. So every once in a while, I'll listen to ideas and opinions that don't quite, you know, correspond to my own. And so when I, when I saw this, 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 you know, the picture of this man, I, you know, I hit the play button assuming that I was going to get, again, you know, like I said, something, you know, along the lines of this other young fellow. And it wasn't that way at all. And one of the things that he said that stood out in my mind was he just simply asked the question, when are black people going to get tired of the police killing them? When are black people going to stop letting the police kill them? And I thought about that. And then, of course, the next thing I, you know, I thought about is, you know, well, what, what do they want us to do? What do they expect us to do? How are we supposed to, how are we supposed to deal with this? If we, when we get angry and we get mad and then rioting happens, then, you know, we get that, well, they're always violent. This is what they always do. Um, so I started thinking about that and I started, you know, thinking of, you know, again, what that, what the first fellow said, why, why, what's the deal with the $25 million lawsuit? What's up with that? How come they get to, to have a lawsuit for $25 million? And I thought about that. You know, again, my response was, one, was just to, to help raise this child, and two, as a way to deal with the pain and suffering of that. And then I, I, I thought further along those lines, and um, let's see, I don't know if I'll have time. I'm going to, I'll try to put all this in one video blog, but then again, it might end up being in, in two. Basically, let me just, how, how, how can I start this off? One of the things that I, I don't know that a lot of people are aware of this, but the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was actually, it was passed through, through the, through commerce. It was not done by way of the House of Congress or the House of Representatives somehow reaching a, a, a moral epiphany that you know that what they were doing to African Americans was wrong, what they were doing to women was wrong, and that you know morally they just wanted to, to just stop that. That is not how the Civil Rights Act of 1964 came into being. Okay, it was basically through commerce. Those institutions, those organizations that are, or were at that time receiving federal funding were basically ordered to stop discrimination if they wanted to continue receiving federal funding. In other words, they were being threatened to be hit where it hurt the most, which is their pocketbooks, you know, their, their accounts, their ledger books. That played a very big part in getting that bill passed. Now there's, there's, there's a lot more to it. There's a lot of titles that go into it and some of them were passed because of this and for that. But in a nutshell, it was, it was put before uh, the Commerce Committee. That is how it was done. Okay, so I'm going to go into that in a little more detail in the second part of this video blog.